All right, guys. So today we're just going to talk very, very general conversation, catching philosophy, uh, my thoughts on how, how a catcher should play. Um, and just very, very, very broad topics, but more philosophical between the years kind of stuff. Like I told you, I, I love talking about the mental game. So a lot of this is going to be mental game stuff. Some mechanics that we're going to watch a video here pretty soon. But I just want to, I want to hear you guys talk, and I want to give you guys my feedback on what, um, what I think the proper way to go about uh, catch, playing the catcher position. Okay. So first, we're going to go around the room. Favorite catcher? Um, Defensive. Mm -hmm. Extension of the pitching staff. That's another answer. What's another one? What's a different job? Very practical. Be the general of the field. General, okay. Catch the ball. Closer, much closer. 27 outs. Closest with Looney's answer. I'll, I'll give it to you. Keep the ball in front of you, okay? <laughs> Same idea, right? Because you can't catch a ball in some dirt, but guess what you got to do? You got to block it, okay? Job of the catcher is to keep the ball in front of you no matter what, whether it's one of these nasty dirt balls to your right, or a nasty dirt ball to your left, or just a simple receive job. It's your job to keep the ball in front of you, okay? Now, here, you're probably thinking, what is that thing, okay? This is something I've developed to, to help people learn how to focus in a baseball setting, okay? So, I call this the upside down triangle model of focus, all right? So, think about this whole, whole triangle as one pitch, okay, one pitch. And you want to repeat this cycle every single pitch on defense. Okay, so right here is right when you throw the ball back to the pitcher. Okay, imagine that throw the ball back to the pitcher. Okay, this point right here, you're analyzing the situation. You're, okay, all right, we have a decent runner on first. We have a nah, okay runner on second. We have a hitter who might be a hit and run guy or might be a bunt guy. You know, you have to analyze the hitter, figure out what he's going to do best. Okay, then you work down. You work talk, talk about situation. Is it nobody out? One out? Two outs? Whatever it may be in time of the game, is it the second inning, the fourth inning, the fifth inning, whatever it may be, I want you guys to be aware of those situations, okay? Now, move on to your pitcher. How's your pitcher doing? Is he, is he an athlete off the mound? Is he 
somebody who's commanding his slider? Is he commanding his fastball? Is he commanding arm side or glove side? Whatever it may be. Defense, okay? Are we playing corners in? Are we pushing the middle back? Are we playing um, everybody infield in? Is the outfield shaded to the left, okay? You have to know these things in order to make the proper calls on defense, okay? Now, this is where you get, you get nitty gritty, okay? Is he going to bunt? Is he going to steal? What's the count? What's all these things? You need to be quick right here. Is it going to be a hit and run count? You're going to have to move the shortstop. Whatever it may be, you have to know that, okay? Right here is a crucial part of this whole sequence, okay? It's either when you get the sign from your coach or when you put the sign down right here, okay? I'm going to give this like a, a 5 to 10 second window depending if you're getting a sign or you're giving it yourself, okay? Right here is the most crucial part of the triangle. Why is that? Why is it empty? Anybody? That's the pitch. It's the pitch. You never know what's going to happen on the pitch, right? That's why you need to lock in for two to three seconds at a time. Okay? Each pitch in baseball lasts about two to three seconds. From the time it comes set to the pitch to the time it gets your glove is about two to three seconds. Okay? And in order to block the ball correctly, to throw a runner out, to receive the ball correctly, you have to totally focus your mind for two to three seconds at a time after this, okay? They think that people say, oh, you don't want to think too much in baseball. I, I disagree. As a catcher, you have to think about all these things every single pitch, but train your mind to totally narrow your focus down to that pitch at the bottom of the triangle. Now, like I said, this is one pitch. You do this triangle again for another pitch. If you compartmentalize each pitch as a triangle, you'll be able to separate the game and play the game one pitch at a time. Okay, this is a model to play the game one pitch at a time. Okay, any questions? I know I ran through that really quick, but I want you guys to really, really absorb this and really take it for what it's worth. For the guys that I've talked to about this before, you have any feedback on this? Porto, what do you got? What do you got in the model? Um, well, just. But it really helps me to stay focused, like just to think about it in two to three seconds, mm -hmm. just to really lock in and focus. And I know when I'm not, that's when the ball gets away from you or right. you mess up on your receiving. Right. And like, like I said, the, these two to three seconds will allow you to be mentally ready to block a ball, receive a ball, or throw a guy out. Okay. And it's not very overwhelming. Can you guys focus for two to three seconds at a time? It's pretty easy, right? You can, you can train your body to focus two to three seconds at a time when you watch TV. When you look at the remote control, say, hey, I want to go to ESPN. You push the buttons, two to three seconds of focus, boom. You train your mind. You did a drill for two to three seconds of focus. Believe me or not, if you think in terms of that stuff, you can find the drills throughout the whole day that can simulate this model. Okay? You're sitting in class, all right? And the teacher is talking about something you don't care about, all right? You're looking, you're looking okay. Have I studied this? Do I need to study this? Is this going to be on the test? Is this important? Does the teacher think I'm really listening? Boom, 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 boom. Now I'm ready for the test. Okay? You have to you have to follow this in everything you do and be able to narrow your focus to the right, the here and now, in order to be present in the moment to perform at your top level in anything. Okay? So if there's any questions, I'm going to move on from this. If there's any questions, please stop me and I'll, I'll, I'll explain some more. Okay? But I think this is really good, guys. A really good tool for you guys to use. Um, to improve your mental game. Now, what Pete said, which is my next point, is a catcher is an extension of the pitching staff and the coaching staff. Okay? We all know that pitchers are a pain in the butt, okay? but you have to be an extension of them. You have to feel connected with them. You have to go out of your way to really feel like you're part of their group because if, they, if you don't, then they're not going to trust you behind the plate. You want them to trust you in everything you do, okay? as well as the coaching staff. Like someone said, you're the general. Okay, you're the general on the field. You gotta, you gotta know where everyone's supposed to be. That's just where this comes in. Okay, you need to know where your defense is. What's the situation? Is he an athlete? Is he not? You have to know everything. That's why you're the coach on the field. Okay. Now, in order, the next thing I have is to build trust with your teammates. There's a bunch of different ways how to build trust. Okay. You can, you can work hard in practice. You can go out of your way to make sure that you get to know everyone on your team to build that personal trust. Now, another way to build trust as a catcher is on a defensive play or on a bump play, you make that correct call to third base and you get the guy out on a bang-bang play because you were focused and you trusted your ability to make a call. Your teammates will trust you more. Okay? Now, next, next thing I have on my list, cap letters. Be loud. I want you guys to be really loud. Okay? It's essential. It's, 
It's, it doesn't do you any good if you're just being quiet and tentative because that's going to lose trust in your teammates. Your teammates want to hear loud, crisp, confident calls from you coming out of coming out of your pie hole. And it's okay if you're if, you know if you're wrong on a call. I mean, I mean we talk about that all the time as a catching staff here. You know, just be loud no matter if you you're just kind of thinking about oh you know are we going one or two here you know just make a loud call or whatever and be decisive about it. And to, to, to feed off Pete, that's perfect feedback. To feed off them, who cares if you're wrong? It's, it, you made a mistake. That's, it's not a big deal. Guess what? In baseball, they'd say that if you hit, you get a hit three out of ten times, you're successful. You're gonna make, you're gonna make mistakes on defense too. So don't worry about. It. Don't be afraid to make a mistake. Be loud. Be confident. And believe in your call. Okay? It's really, really important. Your defense will feed off that kind of confidence. Okay? Um, so I think we talked talked about this week one or week two. Um, but just the idea of make strikes be strikes and let balls be balls. Okay, and I I, I kind of I kind of developed a uh, a mnemonic device, if you will, to, to make you to help you realize that receiving is deceiving. Okay, receiving is deceiving. Now, what's the F word that we don't say around here? Frame. Framing is the F word. We don't say that. Okay. Framing is lying. You want to deceive, a little different, okay? Framing, you're like moving your glove everywhere. You're, you're, you're making way too much movement with your body. Receiving, you're just making the ball look pretty. That's all it is. Receiving is deceiving. There's no framing in this program. I, no, no catcher I ever coach will ever use the word frame again. I promise you that, okay? Um, a, more, a more general note along, along the lines of just catching or getting better. When, when you're playing catch or when you're fielding a, when, when you're fielding a bunt, I talked about this the other week when you did bunt cover or bunt retrieval. We never ever double tap into our glove. Okay? This right here, when you feel a bunt and you double tap into your glove, can be the difference between safe and out, guys. It's, trust me, I've seen it, and I will always get on catcher for double double tapping in their gloves because it's gonna it's gonna ruin you guys. It's gonna ruin your team because you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna hesitate, you're not gonna have that trust from your team. Let's go back to trust. The more you think about the throw too, the more likely you are to let it sail on you. Yeah. If you just keep thinking about it, thinking about it, you know, just get up and throw it. Right. We we had a situation this weekend when we we had practice. One of our catchers not here. Um, he picked up a bunt, or it was well, I think it was a it was drop third strike. He picked he blocked it well. He he took double tap and then he sailed it in the right field because he wasn't wasn't trusting himself and he ended up double tapping and then making a bad throw. Okay. And we obviously talked about that. Um, another very very general note. I, I'm a big I have. A huge pet peeve, okay? Runners on base, catchers throwing back to the pitcher on their knees. Can't stand it. Stand up, throw it to the pitcher, okay? It'll it'll eliminate two possibilities. One, the late steal. <coughs> two, a bad throw, okay? I don't care how good you are on your knees, stand up, no ball. It's professional, it looks good, and you're always going to have a good throw back to your pitcher. If there's a runner on base, stand up and throw the ball back, okay? Um, all right, we're going to jump on the video. So the first video is a guy named Brent Main. Anybody know who he is? Played the big leagues for a long time. He's an old guy now. Um, but I think this video really, it really solidifies when I talk about shaking the hands and just being soft with the glove. He talks about glove mechanics, okay? So shaking hands, popping the can, he just talks about a different way to think about your hand as a glo with glove mechanics. So we'll get, the, we'll get that going here in a second. Old guy, see? Consistently and consistently receive the ball correctly for a catch. I'm trying to deal with a 40 mile an hour pitch. Catch the ball in a position of strength. Another good visual analogy for you, if you can't get the elbow idea, is that to look at the bare hand like a clock. If this is 12, 6, 9, and this little hands, finger is pointing to the 3, you want to work from, say, Four o'clock to one o'clock with the bare hand. That's how See, you want right to there, receive the ball. You hand. do not want to receive the ball from three four to, to one o'clock. Because when you start receiving the ball that way, it pops this elbow up, and again, you're in a, in a compromised position. All right, yeah, so, viewed from the top, we're going to demonstrate this three dimensional. Okay, before we go on to the next video, you guys see that, okay? So, I talk about never ever being a Pac Man, right? Being a Pac Man all the way across, okay? Right now, my thumb's at three o'clock, okay? He said work from four to one. Four 
to 1. It's the same idea. You never ever want to get to 6 o'clock. Okay, because well, this is what happens. The elbow goes up. That 2 seam is going to eat you up and knock you out of the zone. You want to work from 4 to 1. 4 to 1. Okay? Now, we worked on this. Well, what did we do with tag plays and plays? Was that last week or the week before? It was last week? All right. Well, this, this is actually me. Uh, this is a video of me um, at the plate. This is in the Call of World Series in 2010. And uh, the situation is top of the sixth, two outs, tie ball game, two to two, <coughs> runners in first and second, okay? So we had two outs, and uh, I, I wanted to show you guys this because it's pretty cool. Um, it's not necessarily the best example of how to, how to, how to tag play, but it's pretty cool. Is I think catchers will, uh, will appreciate this one. So go ahead and enjoy this, guys. He's on the side of the left field. They just set the runner. Yes, they are. Here comes the throw. Theo turns. Runner runs right in the lane and tacks it. Watch slow mo, guys. Ball caught by Lee. Ward did not slide. Goes right into the catcher, and the inning is over. One more time, take a look at that inning ending play. The left fielder in Bauman fires. Theo doesn't let it go through. He cuts it off and has to quickly turn. Rose and watch Ward run right oh. into the tag. <laughs> Take one more look. Runner <laughs> makes the catch and runs right into the tag, face first. So yeah, guys, that was uh, that was probably the coolest play at home plate that I ever had. Obviously. Are you smiling? Absolutely. <laughs> If that literally, if, I, if that if that if that guy slid, he is safe. I, I keep telling people to that day, but that's a pretty cool video. Um, is there any questions about this? Um, about anything we talk about? I know I grazed a little over a lot of things, but I want you guys to really really understand the stuff we're talking about. Is there anything? <coughs> Looney, you got any feedback for me? What, what do you think about the triangle? I want to hear your take. Um. Yeah, I think like Kyle said. A lot of times, um, when uh, a pitch gets away from you or something like that, uh, and you kind of reflect on it, I think most of the time you'll find that you were thinking about, you know, if a guy was going to steal on that pitch or not, rather than catching the pitch. Um, I know that's one of the things I learned at a younger age uh, my freshman year. A lot of times I would botch balls or like easy balls to catch or see, um, and I'd reflect on it and be, you know, oh well, no wonder I didn't catch it. I was thinking about if the guy was running or not. So um, I think that's a good, you know, focus and concentration. Those are kind of can sometimes be really gray area things, and this is just you know very concrete black and white way to um, a tool to use to to really help you focus and that much better and you really got to you got to practice at it like Colin was saying you know, like this little triangle looks like cool and everything but I mean you're still gonna have a pitch that you're gonna botch and you see you really just gotta work on it because I mean just think about it you know once or twice is not gonna you know help you in the long run so right and Lo Looney brings up a really good point if you think okay oh this guy might steal like coach you're, you're telling me to think about if he's gonna steal or not but see, right here, after you get that sign, all this stuff is gone. You've already processed it, and it's gone. <coughs> this is the only thing that matters, right here. That's it. After you give this sign, or you get that sign from the coach, nothing else matters than the pitch. That's the only thing that matters at that point. Okay. So, yeah, he might steal, or hey, he might bunt, he might bunt, he might hit and run, he might put pressure on you. But guess what? You've already, you've already thought about it. You've already analyzed what's, what you're going to do. Right here, you're just reacting. You're letting it happen. You're focused. You're ready to go. And this is the only thing that matters. No matter what happens, you have focus on that pitch, and you're going to be ready because you already prepared yourself for everything possible that could happen. So, um, if there's nothing else, um, you go guys ahead. have any questions about yeah, yeah, this at please. all? You watch videos and talk about that. I know I, I babbled for a while, but I want you guys to really understand this, or at least at least think about it. Um, and like we have, we have two more weeks to this. Please ask me any questions about this if you want, because I think 
I, I've thought a lot about this. It took me a while to really conceptualize a model for this, and it's been, I think it's really successful for our guys, and it really helped me out. Um, and moving forward, I think it's going to help me too. So, um, on that note, go ahead and uh, head over back to the dugout. Go ahead, we just need, uh, we'll, we'll gear up, but don't worry about your, sh your chest pector. Gear up and we'll, uh, we'll meet right on the other, like by the other on deck circle where we were done receiving drills before. So, I'll see you out there in a second. Put the chairs back, please.